So you want to build a 426 Hemi for your street car, drag racing car, boat, street rod, whichever it is. And I think that's a good idea. So where should we start? I think we should start by looking at the blocks that are available today. Yes, there are old street Hemi blocks out there. And there's the old Mopar Performance blocks from the early 90s to the late teens. And we'll discuss these as we go through the build and the differences and how it would apply to you if you have one of those that you want to build. I think we should look at what is commercially available. On the left is the Cali's block, which is an iron block, which is in, it's a Mopar licensed product. It's a reiteration of what we call the World Products block, a uh, former maker. And it's a good block. On the right, we have the aluminum block, which is available from at least three different vendors. This particular one is a Keith Black, which happens to be my favorite. The thing I like about the Keith Black is the way it looks stock when it's in the car. This is as close to stock as we can get. It looks stock here around the oil pump. We have the regular line for the oil drain back as opposed to whatever this is. It doesn't have the core plugs in the front, which I find hideous. But having said that, this port on the front of the Callies is very nice. That's for your oil inlet to the oil pump if you're running an external line, which you very well might be because Hemi's love big oil pans and big oil pans are generally going to use external lines and that makes an easy place to hook up. So it's very convenient. Whereas on the Keith Black, it doesn't even have a provision for an internal pickup. So you will be running external lines to a pump, any of the pumps and lines that have been popular for the last 50 years. Uh, easiest one is a stock pump with a top plate that has a fitting for the oil line. But that is why I like this but there's nothing wrong with this either. This is a nice block. The very beautiful casting. Uh, seems like all the castings today are really nice. Uh, they've come a long way. Uh, you'll need some kind of build sheet for this build. Uh, bill of materials, shall we say. Kind of give us an idea of what we need. Um, on the left column we have the items. There's about 50 part numbers on this build. And these are the vendors that we'll probably get it from. This is a description of the part, what we're planning on getting. This is the price, which you, if you have your wife, you may want to delete this column because uh, she might see that and want a new SUV or something. And this is the appropriate part number. But that way you can know where you're at on your build. There's also a column here. That little X is telling you what you have in-house and what you, if there's not an X there, you need to be calling those people and asking them where your parts are. So, I think for your build, I think we should do the cast iron block because there's more cast iron blocks out there and I, I feel that that's what you're more, more likely to be building. As we go through the build, we'll discuss the other variants, but I think we should Push this Keith Black out of the way for now, turn the Cali's block upside down, and go to work on it. I should have told you the price difference between the Cali's and the Keith Black block. The Cali's is around 5300 and the Keith Black is 7500 Now we've got the block turned upside down, we're going to remove the main caps and check the main bores. I should have told you uh, before we turned it upside down that you should take some dial calipers and just check the bore and make sure it's roughly what you think it is. It's not important. These blocks usually come unfinished on the bore size unless you buy it from a vendor that finishes it for you before it gets there. But the reason for checking it is to make sure that you've got something close to what you think you got. I bought a block from Mopar, 
supposed to be 425 finished bore and instead they bored it 425 and never honed it so it was unusable and had to hone five thousandths out and get five over pistons to make it work now we're going to remove the rest of the main caps on these new blocks they have a threaded hole in the caps to use a slide hammer with so what you all you do is you go to the hardware store and you buy the longest quarter inch bolts you can get and then you find a piece of round metal and drill a hole through the middle of it and now you've made your own slide hammer the difference between this version and the street hemi version is the street hemi version is not drilled and tapped so on the street hemi you would drill a hole here and a hole here for 5 sixteenths coarse threads drill and tap and then you would make you two slide hammers and the caps come off there's no other good way to remove the caps I know you think you can pry them off with a pry bar or something but no you don't want to be doing that just make your thread puller by the way you can't buy these places you know but there's really nothing to it you just make your thread puller your uh, cap puller slide hammer is what you're making actually and you tap this thing off I never said it was easy mind you but <laughs> you'll get it off okay so now we've got the main caps off and we have to in inspect the bore we're wanting to measure our main bore the reason we couldn't do it with the caps on when you first get it is because you have no idea what they were torqued to or if they were torqued or if they were even tight you don't know if there's any trash under this which would jack up the caps if you did that if you checked it without cleaning all this up first deburring it everything you don't really know where you're at and if you don't measure the main bore when you go to put the motor together if you're checking your clearances on your main bearings and you have too much clearance you're going to be looking for bearings with less clearance now and when really it was all in the main caps it there's nothing wrong everything's perfect if you would just cleaned it up first before you measured it okay so you take your 10 cent file from Harbor Freight and by the way Harbor Freight and all these Chinese tools coming in are really wonderful they're gonna allow you to buy things that people couldn't buy in the old days it's just too expensive I mean Starrett stuff is good but you know a lot of working class people can't go out and drop ten thousand dollars on measuring equipment you know I mean but now with these Chinese stuff micrometers uh, one thing you want is like a two to three micrometer for measuring your crank shaft and stuff and you'll want an inside micrometer for measuring this and anything else you want to measure your bores because I've measured about all sizes anyway we got sidetracked there but so we're trying to clean this up and get it ready we're not trying to really remove any metal all we're doing is filing a little there sliding that across there to see if there's any burrs there to make sure this is clean and that the cap is going to seat properly if the cap doesn't seat properly all your all your measurements are bogus because your caps weren't seated properly so you're just looking for any trash any imperfections not trying to do hardly anything at all now sometimes you get a little, little funny feeling there and you don't know what you're feeling take a little 600 grit and just work it around there a little bit kind of just kind of radius that edge microscopically you can't even see it but it, it feels better to your finger you don't feel there's anything going to get underneath your bearing if the bearing was hanging out nothing big at all just something to make it better so now we're going after we get everything cleaned up get some kind of rag in here that doesn't uh, leave a bunch of fuzz Like I'm saying, you don't, you're not trying to remove any metal. You're just trying to make sure that your cap is seating properly. 
make sure this is all very clean. Okay, now we look at the main caps. We have to look them over for burrs too. Same thing. Is there any trash? Is there any burrs sticking up that might might keep you from getting an accurate measurement? Does it all look good to you? You're not, you can slide this across there, look for any high spots. You're not really trying to push down. You may not even leave a mark on it. You're just, is there something sticking up there that would cause you an erroneous reading? It all looks pretty good. One of these caps, I really couldn't believe how bad it was. I picked it up and there was a big dent here and it, it looked like it fell out of a five-story window. So I sanded it down, piled it down a little bit and I, I saw it down here. It's got the same bump. So, pile it down too. But that, then I flipped it over here, and this is, this is damaged into the important area. So now, when I slide this file over it, look at what it's doing. Can you see that? Look how, that, how it's cutting there. You know why it's cutting there? That's right, because this got smashed. The cap was sitting in here whoppy-jawed, like this. I mean... How are you going to get a proper measurement on your main bores with the face smashed in like that? So I'm going to have to play with that a little bit and get that where it's level with this. That's terrible. Can you all see that spot there? That's terrible. So I'll get that lined up. So I'm going to clean all this up. I'm going to inspect the caps, I'm going to sign, sand these little corners, file all these little edges. You're, you're barely touching anything. You're not trying to remove any metal. You're just looking for high spots. I will finish these up, and then I'll put the caps back on, and we'll measure the main bore and see if it's what we think it is. Now I have cleaned up the registers as we were doing, deburring everything, making sure there's nothing sharp here, making sure there's no burrs, no metal sticking up where the caps will sit flat so we can get an accurate measurement. Then I used the ARP bolts that came in with the block and uh, the ARP lube and torqued everything to spec side bolts. Now on these ARP bolts sometimes you'll see high quality fasteners. This is a uh, oversized version so you can see what we're talking about. But this there's a radius right here. In other words it's not straight down and then straight out. There's a radius here for strength on these type of bolts. And you're a, a quality washer fits very tight on the bolt and you're wondering how's that radius going to fit in the washer. Well the washer has got a chamfer right there for the radius of that bolt to go into so now it fits flush with the bolt. The reason I mention all this is these washers are going to have that chamfer there for the radius under the head. So when you're putting this together, make sure the chamfer is underneath the bolt head, not turned upside down where this would be touching the bolt head. See how it doesn't work anymore? There's a radius under that, 
right in here and you're going to have to go this way with a chamfer to make it work right. On the ARP lube, which is what ARP torque specs are based on, they want you to use every time, and they include some normally with every, every time you buy some. They want you to put some on the threads, and they want you to put some under the bolt head, but not between the washer and the part that you're bolting down. I believe that is so the washer will stay still and the bolt head will turn on the top of the washer instead of the bottom. But on the threads of the bolt and on underneath of the bolt head is where they want it. The, then torque everything down and then we can do our measurements with the dial board gauge. The spec is 2.943 on the high side. It's only a half an inch, I mean a half a thou uh, spec to work with. I set the dial board gauge at the high side, 2.943, to see, uh, because that's where most people want to set it, because we're drag racers, you want everything loose. Okay, so on this back end, number five, we are one to two tenths lower than the low spec. Not good, but we'll go to the next. The next three are dead on, which is fun. You know, you, you like it when it's perfect. Dead on to a zero. The thrust bearing, number three. Dead on to a zero. Number two. Dead on. Number one is less than one tenth tight, tighter than the spec. So, no, it's not exactly perfect. We are one to two tight here, one to two tenths, one tenth under here, dead on here. Yes, I would like to, I wish these were a little bigger, but I can't line hone this when these three are dead on. I, I just can't do it. We're dealing in tenths here, it's I mean, nobody would even know. It's, I mean, we're talking tenths, one tenth, one and a half tenths back here. It's just, we can't chase that with these perfect. If there was a little room to play with here, I'd just stick this in the line home, make a few strokes. These would come up into spec, and uh, these wouldn't go over. But we're already at the high limit here, which is, which is perfect. We can't, we, we can't do anything. But we are talking tense, which is very close. Now, how you don't have to have an expensive dial bore gauge and setting fixture to do this. There's other ways you can do your main bearing clearances. One way would be before you put the caps on. You're ready to put the caps on. You could put your main bearings in. Lay your crank in there, spend one dollar on some plastic gauge, lay that on your main journals, put the caps on, take the caps back off, and the plastic gauge will tell you what your main bearing clearance is. And that would uh, be a lot less money. So bear that in mind, plastic gauge works, it will tell you your clearance. There's other ways, you know, you can measure with these, 
you're going to want one of these. These, you can buy this stuff so reasonable now. I think I saw one of these twenty-two dollars and inside my micrometer. Uh, you're going to want to, wanting to buy a few tools. Now, one thing I keep hearing on the internet, uh, I think everybody's just repeating what somebody else said because they think it makes them look smart. But they'll tell you that if you put main studs in and replace a, your main cap bolts, that you have to have the block line honed. Well, I can't say that I believe that just because somebody else says that. That means absolutely nothing to me. Uh, without them showing me data, all they have is an opinion. So what I think we ought to do, just for fun, is I think I'll pull these bolts out and put in a set of studs and uh, let's see. Let's see if they know anything about their, what they're talking about or if they're just talking smack. Okay, I've removed the main cap bolts, cleaned everything up, installed ARP studs, ARP lube, torqued to the ARP spec for the studs, and now we'll measure again. We know where we were at. We were two under the low limit here, dead on, dead on, dead on, and one under the low limit here. And when I say dead on, that's... Uh, 2.943, which is the high limit. They only give you five tenths to work with, but the high limit is what you would normally go for. But it's amusing, and after we check this, you will know that if you put studs in, yes, it does clamp harder. You, you have a, you're tightening a, a fine thread instead of a coarse thread, it's a stud instead of a bolt. It's ARP lube instead of engine oil. And it's 110 instead of uh, 100 foot-pounds. So, yes, you have more clamping load. But it doesn't distort anything any different. Maybe it would on some kind of junk Chevy or something. Between one and two, too tight. This one and two tenths. Dead on exactly what it was with bolts. This one's dead on exactly what it was with bolts. Now this is the same block, the same temperature, the same everything. So what I'm trying to tell you you know, this one's really improved a tenth, really. <laughs> wow, let me try that again. That thing's not, not tight anymore. It, it improved. Okay, so... Uh, the next time you hear that smack from somebody, don't say anything to them, don't try to educate them, because... He thinks he knows more than you anyway, and you're just a dummy. But in reality, you have data. Same block, same main caps, bolts, studs. Nothing changed over a tenth of a thousandth. That one changed a tenth. Everything else was the same. So now you know the truth. Now the difference is in some of these blocks... The original 426 Hemi had the three center caps cross-bolted, as you know. The back main cap looked like this one. The front main cap also looked like this one. The new, starting with the World Products block, the new blocks have the front cross-bolted. Here's the problem. These caps, when they use cross bolts, are taller. So, this one remains the original size, which, by the way, is a regular RB size in height. So, if you order ARP studs for a 440, they're all going to be this height. 
if you order a set for a 426 Hemi, the front and the back are going to be this height, and the three in the middle are going to be this height. So, even though you've got a 426 Hemi here, if it's got the front cross bolt main, you're going to have to get a set that has four long pairs of studs and one, whereas a street Hemi would take three long pairs and two short pairs. So, a stock ARP set would be the 1455601. Oh, That's going to give short studs here and here. For these small caps and this length studs for the taller caps. If you have a World Products block or a block that has these four instead of three cross bolted, they have a different part number. The, the one I found for these blocks was is a 1455603. It comes with studs for the side, which is idiotic. Just throw that crap away and use your bolts. And maybe my catalog's old. Maybe they have since come out with a, with a better part number. But, and, and I'll call them and ask them that. But anyway, don't order a stud kit. If you want to run studs, that's fine. But don't order a stud kit for a 426 Hemi, or it's going to have four of these short ones for the front and back. It is not for a four cross bolt main block. The Keith Black block comes with studs, so... That won't be an issue if you use one of those. So this applies to the ones that have the four cross bolt mains. The next step, we'll cylinder hone. I think we should stop this episode of the build so the videos don't get too long. Next one, we'll be uh, honing the cylinders. And we'll put a torque plate on it and see if it distorts it or not. You might be surprised.